Welcome to this lecture on creating a glossary of terms in iBooks Author. Now, you may already know that your Mac or your iOS device has a built-in dictionary that allows your, the user to look up the meaning of any highlighted word. So for example, if I was to select this word and control click or right click, you can actually see that I have an option to look up a word at any point. I can look up the word distinguish and it brings up a dictionary a dictionary definition of that word. But if you're publishing a textbook or a technical manual, you may actually want to provide your own description or definition for the terms that you have in your book. iBooks Author allows you to easily add glossary items and there's you know, several ways to do this. So what we're going to do is uh, take a look at that in this lecture. And I'm going to just go to a, one of my content pages. And um, what I want to do is select a word that I want to create a glossary term for. So if I, again, just double click on a word, it selects the word. Maybe I want to define what the word borrows means. Um, I can select this word and I can right click on this word and I actually have an option to create a glossary term from selection. Okay, so in my case, I'm going to just go ahead and select this option. And you can see that the formatting for this word changes a little bit. So it, it appears in bold faced. So when a reader is looking at your text, they can tell that there is a, a specific definition associated with that word. So that's one way that you can go about doing that. Another way that you can do that is by simply selecting the text that you want to define. And then there is a glossary bar, a, a glossary toolbar that you can use. Um, right now it's not visible, but I can go to my view menu and go to show glossary toolbar and you can see that it adds it the toolbar right underneath my format bar and uh, I can add a new glossary term. So New York Stock Exchange is already selected because I've highlighted it in the, um, in the document and then I can just click on add term. And it does the same thing. So what it's done is it's it's building a list under the glossary uh, for us that we can go back and, and define. So for the purpose of our exercise, I'm just going to, to select NASDAQ. And I'm going to add the term as well. Okay, so now if I want to take a look at all the items that I have included in my glossary, I can go to the glossary section in the book pane. And you can see that I now have three terms that I need to define. So uh, in order to do that, we've got uh, all of our glossary terms in the glossary folder. Uh, I have a, a text file here that you can open up and there is a little description of what borrow is, um, what NASDAQ is. So I'll go to borrows and just remove that uh, placeholder text. I'll do the same thing with NASDAQ. Okay, and lastly, I'll just uh, take care of the New York Stock Exchange. Okay, so a couple of things to note with glossary. So one thing is that you can actually relate glossary terms to one another. So you can have one term or multiple terms that are related to uh, the current glossary term that somebody's looking up. And the way that we do that is simply just by clicking uh, the item from the glossary list and just dragging it into this area. So now you can see that the New York Stock Exchange and NASDAQ are related. If I click on NASDAQ, you can see that that relationship exists here as well. So that relationship goes both ways. If uh, I want to maybe build an index of every place where the word NASDAQ appears or the New York Stock Exchange appears, I can click on Find Term. So when I do that, it actually just launches a, a Find and Replace window. And I can see that that's the first um, time that the word New York Stock Exchange appears in my book. This is the primary definition for this term. If I click Next, it finds it again in a different section. Now what I can do here is I already have a definition for the New York Stock Exchange. So if I select this item, you can see up here that I actually can't add this item anymore. There's a gray, it's grayed out and it just says that it's been added. So what I can do instead is I can add an index link. So I can just go ahead and select add link. And you can see that the formatting changes slightly. 
it tell you know again it's a cue to the reader that you can click on or tap on this uh, link to go to the glossary and now when we look down at, along the bottom under uh, the index let me get rid of that you can see that I have two instances of it I have the primary definition which is uh, bolded in chapter one and then I have uh, an additional instance of this term appearing in my book in chapter three so this way a reader can quickly find the term that they're looking for get a definition and then they can also jump ahead to where that word or that term appeared in uh, different parts of your book so they can get some context around that term now the last thing I'm just going to show you here is that you can actually add images or graphics to your glossary terms. I've got a map of the five boroughs here. It happens to be in the GIF or GIF format. And I'm just going to click and drag it onto the text. And, um, and then it's just a matter of just resizing it. And you can see that iBooks Author in general, when you're working with graphics and trying to reposition them on your page, it gives you some nice um, guides that let you, you know, position it just in the right place. So that looks good to me. I'll just leave that there. And that becomes my glossary definition for the word boroughs. Now, remember that you don't actually have to use the glossary feature if you don't want to. So it's completely optional, but you can't get rid of it in the book pane. So you'll always see this glossary term here, but you, you can safely ignore it if you're not going to add any terms. If you don't add any terms here uh, in this list, then um, it's not going to show up in your final book in the table of contents. It's not going to be accessible to the reader at all. And this concludes our lecture on working with the glossary in iBooks Author.